hello to all of you. Welcome. So welcome to my most uh, favorite presentation spot directly after lunch. So I feel the pressure is on also because we've got two other presentations. Still, I would love to uh, start with a small participation exercise. So it's all participation experts. So if you had the choice to do a citizen, participa citizen participation project on the national level, what would you do? Would you either do a citizen assembly yeah, with randomly selected citizens and so on, yeah, citizen assembly, or would you go for some mass online participation? So those for citizen assembly, please stand up. The others stay seated, and all those who are unsure can do the kind of gymnastic thing. Citizen assembly or online mass? Okay, so eight of this kind of thing is too stupid for you, and no one is unsure, but thanks, thanks, thanks for that. Look, uh, so we are a German foundation, and in Germany, sometimes clickers work. So does that work too here? Uh, so, okay, here. So we are a German foundation, and we've been engaged in citizen participation uh, for a while. Uh, and Stefan and I, we, we are presenting you a project we are doing together currently with the German Ministry of uh, the Interior, uh, which is called Forum Against Fakes. So it is a, well, we would say a mass citizen participation project dealing with the challenge of disinformation. Sorry, it's the clicker. There is a time lag now. Yeah. Good. About the project. So, I mean, we all know this, that this information is a huge challenge. And we've done a survey in Germany, and of course, 84% 84 of Germans are saying this information is a huge risk to our democracy. But when you ask them individually, then it is only 16% who think they are affected uh, by this information. On the other hand, they say 70% of all the other people might be affected by this information. Now, you can say that's perhaps a typical German thing. You know, it's just the others, not, not me. But I think it's a general problem. So this information is, is a risk. And at the moment, the German uh, Ministry of the Interior is developing its its counter disinformation strategy. And the idea is that we as a foundation, together with the ministry, we're doing a citizen participation project that produces results, and the results are being fed into the counter disinformation strategy. Uh, and, as parties, and we're doing it together with the ministry, with two other foundations, but we're also doing it together with a kind of really big uh, media outlet. So, T online, so it's the it's the second biggest uh, online uh, news outlet in Germany. Uh, so, which is important for us because what we are trying to do, or what we've done, is uh, I go back. Uh, what what we are trying to do is to combine uh, a citizen assembly, but the virtues of a citizen assembly, with online consultation. And as far as we know, that, that hasn't really happened before. Because we are convinced of citizen assemblies, so we've been long engaged in the community and we've advocated for them. But there is downsides, you know. For a citizen assembly to have an effect, it needs to have visibility, it needs to have legitimacy, and for that, you need, ideally, a lot of people involved. And the problem with citizen assemblies is as well, that it is kind of against the idea of participation because people are kind of selected randomly. And as an ordinary citizen who, who says, well, I want to participate in politics, you don't have the chance to participate. And this is why we say, okay, we combine that with online participation uh, because in online participation, everyone can participate, uh, more people get involved, and by involving also more people, we are increasing the political pressure because a Let's be honest, apart from Ireland, yeah, where citizens' assemblies were really, really successful, a lot of other citizens' assemblies kind of fail or half fail because they are getting no visibility at all. And no visibility, no legitimacy, no political pressure. That's the problem. And this is why we've come up with the kind of uh, new method. And we also uh, kicked it off uh, with a kind of bigger, uh, bigger media campaign, also together with a news outlet to online uh, on on five thousand those kind of how do you billboards in Germany. So uh, 
So we, we did a campaign forum against fakes, get involved, uh, and so on. So all together, combining citizen assembly, online consultation, having uh, uh, a broader uh, PR campaign. So and Stefan, so you're the expert also on our method. So we call it the zipper of participation. Yes. Thank you, Dominic. I'll explain you the zipper and I'll try to go through the method um, now as quickly and shortly as possible. But if you want to know more about it, please approach us afterwards and then I can go into it. So what Dominic said, what the key, the selling point of this project is, is this intricate combination of a citizen's assembly with a mass online participation. And what the zipper is trying to kind of represent is that these things don't run just completely in parallel, um, but um, that they run at different stages than working into each other and working with each other. Um, that we've started with an online participation and went back to the uh, citizen assembly and so on. And I'll explain that in detail now. Now, um, for all the people who are not from Ireland, I'll try to quickly explain what a citizen assembly um, um, is. Many of you will um, likely already know and kind of what we've been doing. So for this assembly itself, uh, we've um, randomly selected 120 participants, um, stratified them by age, gender, place of residence, educational attainment, and migration background. Um, in order to reach, it's not something that's necessarily super representative, but incredibly diverse, um, and a picture of um, the diversity of, um, of German society, we recruited them and then run the thing online and offline. And the way it's been running, we've been having several meetings between March um, uh, and May of uh, this year. Two of those meetings um, in person in Berlin, three days each, so very intense. Um, and in between also um, three um, online meetings. And very key here, working both in large group panel situations and but the most important part being um, a lot of small group interaction and, and deliberation and in the large group particularly exchange with experts and stakeholders so the whole part of that part of the method as you know who knows it's assembly is really this kind of intense and continuous deliberation about the subject matter um, um, and particularly what's what's new here is also a discussion of the online and participation and results and how that works out in a second I'll skip that because we have very little time um, about the history of the assembly, but I quickly um, explained the, uh, what we've been doing um, in the um, online participation component. So, so far, we've been running the online participation. We had more than 200,000 participants and more than um, 1 million votes so far. The way we've been trying to implement it is to have a very, very kind of low threshold um, kind of participation. So, very easy to connect. You don't have to sign up your, your your contact details, minimal data log, and people could immediately um, kind of participate. That's something I can go back that Dominic had shown here. What we particularly work with, obviously, yeah, with UT Online, where you're reading an article and you immediately see if you can go to media, you can directly engage. That's, for example, what it, uh, what it looked like. Um, but also, although it's been very low threshold, it's been very much citizen driven and, and uh, we've been working with um, the service provider make.org and what they've been doing is something very similar to the platform Polis is doing that particularly in the first part and um, citizens could give them um, their own kind of ideas and then also vote on the ideas of other citizens um, online. Um, and um, the way we've been doing that several states and I'll try to explain that to you very quickly. So at the very beginning, um, of the project, we started off um, with a consultation online on the perceptions of and solutions to um, to disinformation. And here we are citizens online to, um, on the one hand, provide a um, proposal to how Germany could deal with disinformation, but also vote on the other. So very similar to what politicians or the ones who are familiar with that. And um, then when we did that, the the polls were analyzed, grouped into ideas, um, and those groups then served kind of as the basis, basic agenda of the citizen assembly. Now, as you know, this is not the, the kind of author of the method of the citizen assembly, um, where the agenda is done by the assembly itself, but in our case, it worked really well because we really gave legitimacy to the citizens. I think it really helped them to, to give uh, quite a lot of purpose, and it really helped them to drop the assembly, which then you can see here after that, we had the launch meeting of the assembly, three day meeting um, in Berlin. And after that, um, and three online meetings were and it's then developed very, very concrete ideas also based on the on the, the consultation um, online. Now, at this point here, they had developed 10 ideas and the decided in the assembly 
to take five ideas again to the online level to a deliberation platform um, where then citizens online were asked to give co very concrete comments and vote um, on those five initial um, recommendations. And that worked. We had quite a lot of feedback there from citizens. Again, this was aggregated and then again, head back into the uh, second big um, um, in-person meeting of the assembly where then the different groups of citizens in the assembly took the feedback of the citizens online, thought about their own assumptions, their own initial ideas, and amended them accordingly. And I'll sh show you an example later um, how that, for example, worked. And then they came up with final recommendations. And now what's now ongoing right now is um, a final voting online where people could vote on all the um, 10 recommendations, which we split into 28 very concrete measures. And um, based on that, then we'll develop a ranking and um, show top recommendations. And one of the, the ideas behind that is that all this will go into a citizen's report to the government. And now giving this back to the online community, the, the, the kind of big, um, also with the big numbers, then gives it again um, quite a lot more credibility because those top recommendations, they are then sanctioned by the citizens online and by the assembly, which gives quite a lot of political force. And that's, you know, what's important to us. Um, these are the numbers. Um, in the first um, participation, we had nearly 200,000 participants, more than about 600 uh, suggestions. The second one, think about the politics being much more demanding if you can people had to give comments. Again, 10,000 participants, more than 1,700 very intense comments. Very good. And now we are, after eight days of the third participation, I checked that once two days ago before we left um, Germany, and we had already 200. 10,000 votes, we are kind of in a similar trend here. So, quite a lot of citizens. Um, finally, quickly, just um, want to show you um, here one of the um, of, of the results, um, which is very interesting, I think, in the second consultation. Um, so, one of the ideas that citizens had um, in the assembly was, you know, they will, you know, they like to create institutions, you know, maybe create institutions of independent and centralized bodies that check and correct this disinformation. So, very, very intrusive. They had that idea that went online, although 65% were in favor of that online, there were a lot of very critical and constructive comments on that, which we aggregated fed back into the assembly. And based on that, the assembly moderated its own results then in a much more kind of, well, I, I would assume, more practical and more um, nuanced recommendation. So that that worked. Sorry, that was now a tour de force, I think. I went very quickly, but I'll hand it over for a calming conclusion by Dominic. If you could deliver it. Yeah, perhaps I think we've still got four, four minutes. Perhaps I, I would love to go back once again to that initial slide because I, we, we thought this is a community of civic tech nerds, so, so we can go into the details. Um, but I mean, this is not really difficult for participants themselves, you know, you, you, we've got to say. For, for people who participate in a citizens' assembly, they just show up in the room. So they do not need to know anything about the methodology. And for those who go on the online platform, uh, via a widget, a widget which was on the, uh, uh, the, the news outlet website, yeah, say they just click basically on a button or they upload an idea. So that's very, very, very simple. What is not that simple, of course, is that kind of zipper. Yeah, that is not that simple. But participants, they do not need to know anything about it. But for us, uh, and I want to summarize that it is important basically that people in a citizen uh, assembly they do not start with an empty piece of paper they get ideas from a bigger crowd and in our ca case from 200,000 people which is kind of even for, for Germany considerable then they deliberate in a citizen assembly they develop ideas like the one Stefan said, you know, so disinformation dangerous, we've got to regulate you know, so that's that's the kind of immediate impulse people have quite often in citizens' assembly. There is a problem we've got to regulate. You know, they, can, they had the idea, but then they got feedback, again, from the wider online community, which basically told them, well, regulation could be an idea, but it's, it's not that simple. Well, think about it differently. Back into the citizen assembly, and the citizen assembly, of course, uh, delivered basically the final recommendations and what we are doing in the last phase is simply, simply some sort of ranking. Yeah. We've got 
10 different recommendations and we ask the wider public which are the recommendations that are the most important for you. But at the end of the day, who was holding the pen? It was... I'm, 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 a, I'm a bit disappointed of this, uh, this group here, I must say. <laughs> okay, so at the end of the day, uh, we've got a ranking as well. Um, good, so now I've got to switch. Okay, so, so what are our conclusions so far? So results will be handed over to the German Ministry of the Interior in September. Then uh, hopefully we're getting a bit of publicity in Germany. So we've, we've reached uh, significant numbers, uh, I would say, so, uh, which was important. And for that, of course, uh, that is also important for the ministry uh, because they can say we've involved a lot of people, but that also increases the political pressure on the ministry. So they are really working on, the, on a detailed follow-up process because they know a lot of people were involved and uh, it, is, it is public. So we, we've learned that the kind of zipper works, but we also have to be honest. Yeah? So the first online phase was kind of open for five weeks, the second one as well. And the longer the phases were open, the more online moderation we had to do. You know, I mean, there is this information. And in Germany, we've got some right wing political parties, too. Yeah. So we were afraid of that at the beginning. So it worked out overall. But we had, of course, we had to shed a, a close eye on it. Uh, it produced overall good results. We didn't really go into re the results in this session, but we are quite happy uh, with the results. Is this information a good topic for citizen participation? We were not exactly sure at the beginning, but I think it was. Uh, it is a, a really good topic because people are aware of, of something. They know there is something going on, but they can't really grab it. And in a way, they delve together into the topic, uh, which was interesting to see. Then political partnership and communication are key. As a foundation, we're saying we're not doing citizen participation projects as civil society actors only. Yeah? So we're working together with ministries because our aim is, of course, that ministry staff, they've got to learn yeah? that so we need to have a cultural change within ministries. But also there needs to be, I mean, someone who picks up uh, the results and who deals with the results. Uh, obviously, so the, the combination or the involvement of a media outlet was super important for us. Yeah, Of course, Stefan and I, we think so. Uh, we can reach out to a considerable uh, group of people, but I'm not sure whether we would get over a hundred or a thousand or so. You know, so of course, having a big media outlet helps. Uh, unclear is a bit the effect on public debate. Yeah, So of course, we are proud of the 200,000. It is big, but it is not that every German newspaper has reported about it. But in a way, you know, there is that kind of ongoing debate on disinformation and, uh, and of course, so we helped that debate, that debate helped us, uh, I, I guess uh, it, had an, it had an effect. So we stayed within the 20, 20 minutes. Uh, now, now it is you, I wanna hear that applause here. Yeah. 